Rhythms and Rhythmic Notation, Part 3, Time Signatures. At the start of this series, we looked at how rhythm is almost like a board game, with base rules that set you up to add various expansions that work together or separately, each one adding new possibilities and sounds for music. We've covered quite a few important rules and expansions so far, but everything we've looked at has included time signatures based on the quarter note. In 4-4, there's four beats in a bar, and the quarter note gets one beat. The quarter note defines the tempo and aligns with the beat. Longer notes are defined by how many quarter notes long they are, like half notes, dotted half notes, and whole notes. And shorter notes, like eighth notes and sixteenth notes, are some fraction of a quarter note. And if the meter of the music is different, like if it feels like it's in three instead of four, then you just use a three-four time signature. You can put whatever number of beats in a bar you like, but as long as four is on the bottom of the time signature, it means that the quarter note is the basic unit of time, and everything to do with rhythm relates to the quarter. But you can have time signatures based on the eighth note, like six eight, or on the half note, like two two. And although the rules for interpreting these markings are pretty simple, for a lot of people, this really does feel like redefining reality, and it takes a bit of mental readjustment. I remember the first time I learned a piece with a different time signature, and my brain just didn't understand what my teacher was trying to tell me at all. And I didn't understand why you would do this anyway. But time signatures make a bit more sense when you realize that the top number can be heard in the music and describes how the music feels. You can hear the difference between music that's in three, or in four. But because the bottom number defines what kind of note is to be counted as the beat, you can't actually hear it, because it only affects how the music looks when the composer writes it down. And that maybe still sounds a little bit confusing, but stick with me, and let's look at how certain time signatures can be really useful to make certain music way easier to read, understand, and perform. Consider this passage. It has a bunch of sixteenth notes, a dotted quarter note, and eighth note syncopation, which are all things you should understand if you looked at parts one and two of this series. But many people still find these rhythms tricky. But this passage looks a lot simpler. It's mostly just eighths and quarter notes, and the only dotted rhythm is a dotted half note, all of which are comparatively pretty simple. And if you look closely, they're actually the exact same notes. It's just that all the rhythmic values are doubled on the bottom example. And if we double the metronome marking, then they're going to sound identical. But 240 beats per minute is really fast to count, and the metronome is kind of annoying at this tempo. And you may injure the conductor as they try to keep up. But we can actually have the best of both worlds by using a 2-2 time signature, which allows for simpler rhythms and more manageable tempos. 2-2 means each bar is two beats long and you're counting the half note. So in this case, 120 beats per minute means 120 half notes, not quarter notes per minute. Two-two is often called cut time, or sometimes a la breve, and can also be notated with this symbol, a C with a vertical line through it, similar to how 4-4 time is often known as common time and notated with a C. These terms and symbols are often used interchangeably. And the fact that cut time looks like common time can be really useful when learning a new piece. If the target tempo is 100 beats per minute in cut time, you can start learning it by practicing it at 100 beats per minute in common time. This automatically cuts the tempo in half. Then you gradually increase the tempo until you double it, because 200 beats per minute in 4-4 four four is the same as 100 beats per minute in cut time. Then switch the metronome back to 100 beats per minute, but keep playing the same tempo, and now you're playing 100 beats per minute in 2-2 two two time. Cut time is also useful for making syncopations easier to read. Many people find all these single eighth notes to be pretty confusing. But in cut time, with quarter and half notes, they're much easier to read and count. And one word of caution when playing in cut time. Be careful not to lapse back into 4-4 four four when you hit a longer note, like a half note or a whole note. Remember that there are just two pulses in each bar in cut time. It can take some getting used to, but the more you do it, the easier it is to keep track. And that's by far the most common use of time signatures with two on the bottom. 
to use cut time to play fast music and make rhythms easier to read. But others are possible, such as 3-2 and 4-2, which are just three and four half notes per bar where you're counting the half note. They're not as commonly used, but here's what they might sound like. Now, just like you might use cut time to avoid sixteenths, if you were playing a piece with lots of triplets, you might start to wonder if there's a way to avoid having all those little threes that are cluttering up the music. And we can actually eliminate all of those and make this a lot easier to read with a 6-8 time signature. 6-8 is an example of a compound time signature, which is based on triplet subdivision. So it sounds and feels just like 2-4 with triplets, but the main difference is it's easier to read. And that triplet feel is what makes 6-8 different from 3-4. Both have 6 eighth notes in a bar, but 3-4 is usually used for music in triple meter. It feels like it's in 3 and the tempo is defined by the quarter note. And each beat subdivides into 2 eighth notes. Six eight is used for music in duple meter. It feels like it's in two and the tempo is actually defined by the dotted quarter. And the beat subdivides into three eighth notes. As far as counting, you're usually just going to count each eighth note. And because six eight has a duple feel, you'll notice that the strong beats are on one and four. Now at this point, I think it's worth mentioning that 6-8 is a little weird. 6-8 by definition means six beats in a bar and we're counting the eighth note. But in practice, 6-8 is in duple meter, two beats per bar. But that's the nature of compound time signatures. The base unit is the eighth note, but the top number is always a multiple of three because compound time signatures all have an underlying triplet feel. In 9-8, that sounds like triplets in 3-4. and 12-8 feels like triplets in 4-4. And others are possible, but rarely seen. And if you're wondering why we even bother with these concepts when you can just use triplets instead, keep in mind that there's actually lots of ways you could theoretically write a rhythm that would still sound the same, even though they look really different. One or the other might make more sense in context, or a composer might just prefer one kind. And some probably don't make sense in almost any context. And if you'd like to have a conversation about these or other musical topics, I teach lessons online. I play trumpet, but I've coached musicians who play all kinds of instruments about all kinds of musical topics. We can work on rhythms, learn pieces, work on improvisation or sight reading, or whatever you like. Visit my website, bradharrison.ca, for more information. And if you'd like to support this and future videos, please consider becoming a member of my channel or joining my Patreon. You'll gain access to a folder of exercises, practice materials, and play-along recordings for rhythmic studies, improvisation, and a huge scale syllabus designed to help you learn all your scales in no time. As described in my video, learn all your scales in 24 hours. Check the description for links to become a member. Subdividing and compound time works similarly to what we've seen previously. There are two eighths to a quarter and two sixteenths to an eighth. But the counting is a bit different because instead of counting the quarter, you're counting the eighth as the base unit of time. So the quarter note is two beats long and the sixteenth note is half a beat. In simple time, eighth notes are half a beat and counted one and two and. But in compound time, it's the sixteenths that are counted that way. You might also see dotted eighths grouped with sixteenths. And 32nd notes are possible, but not terribly common. However, they will get counted like 16ths in common time, with one E and a. After simple subdivision is the issue of tuplets, which are non-standard divisions of the beat. In simple time, that usually refers to a triplet, fitting three eighth notes into the space of one beat. But compound time is already based on triplets, so the most common tuplet is actually a duple, which fits two notes into the space of a dotted quarter. 
You can also get the same effect with dotted eighths. They sound the same, but composers may choose one or the other based on personal preference. The only version of compound time we haven't looked at yet is 3-8, which is also possible but not commonly used because it doesn't really offer any advantages over 3-4 time. But 3-8 does show up mixed with other time signatures in the same piece, which brings us to our next expansion, complex and mixed meter. Complex or irregular time signatures follow all the rules we've seen before, but combine simple and compound meter, which just means that you have short beats that divide into two and long beats that divide into three but the eighth note is always the same. An example might be seven eight. It's just seven eighth notes in a bar, which are commonly grouped in a pattern of two, two, three, two short beats and a long beat. You might also see 10 eight, which is commonly shown with eighths in a three, three, two, two pattern, two long beats and two short beats. Anything is technically possible with these time signatures. It's also possible to see time signatures based on 16th notes or 32nd notes. They're based on all the same rules we've already seen, but their utility is pretty limited and they just don't seem to be used that often. The last thing we'll look at in this expansion is something called mixed meter. For one, you can have bars of different lengths in simple meter. And you can also do the same thing in compound meter. But things get really interesting when you start mixing up bars with different bottom numbers, like 4-4 four, four and 3-8. Mixed meter is a bit like counting in complex meter. It's usually just combinations of long and short beats, and the eighth note always stays the same. Rhythm can be a complicated topic, and it takes a good amount of practice to get comfortable with reading this notation. And there are even more expansions we'll cover another day. But if you have a decent handle on the rules we've covered so far, you're going to have the skills to get through the vast majority of musical notation that you're likely to encounter. Practice hard, and good luck! Special thanks to my patrons and channel members. I really appreciate your support and I hope you're enjoying all the additional resources that come with membership. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Enable notifications and check the description and my channel for more videos on music theory and practice techniques. Thanks for watching.